Is this set to start, Crystal? Yes, I can start recording now. Okay, thank you. So I have 7.32 p.m. I'm gonna to call to order Woodstock's Planning and Zoning Commission for January 21st, 2021. And this is the first meeting of the new year. And I'll go through our um, roll call here. So I'll just read through. So just tell me that you're here. So we have it on the record. Joe Adaletta. Here. Mark Blackmer. Here. Sid Blodgett. Here. Gail Dickinson. Here. Nancy Frazier told us she's not able to attend tonight. Jeff Gordon, I'm here. Jeff Marcotte. Here. David Morse. Here. Um, I lost my, here we go. Doug Porter. Here. Fred Rich. Here. Dwight Rhinowitz. Here. And Timothy Young. Here. So I will note that we have a quorum, which is good. And then Jeff, you seem to be the one to do the honors to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know if you can see the flag I have in the background or. But if you want to take us through the pledge. The Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to and the Republic, Republic for which, which stands, stands one, nation one nation under God, God individual, with liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. I'll go through I, the meeting. I had a terrible amount of feedback here. I hope I didn't goof it up. I'm sure you didn't. And what I'm just going to ask is uh, if all if all members of the public can keep their uh, themselves on mute so we don't get any type of feedback that would be appreciated or I think Crystal you're able to mute them if they if they aren't muted. I'll go through the uh, meeting rules and guidelines um, in case uh, anyone has not been to our meeting before to hear it. We are meeting virtual as you can see but we do follow all the rules otherwise that are applicable uh, to us in any of the governor's executive orders. Um, you just heard me ask to keep yourself on mute if you do wish to be recognized. Um, if there is something, then uh, let us know uh, either by raising your hand or if you're on the phone, uh, there is a feature to flag us. Is that the, um, remind me, Crystal, is that the star nine? Yes, I believe it is. Yep. Um, I do ask that people do not use the chat function because we don't have sidebar conversations during our meetings when we meet in person. So even though there is the chat function, I ask that you refrain from using it. Uh, if you wanted to see a live transcript, you can go to the top of the screen and there's a red button that says live and you can click on it. And I've never tried it, but I guess it's supposed to do the live transcript. All meeting uh, documents, if you wanted to access them, are accessible through the link on the agenda at the town uh, webpage that is for planning and zoning and all the documents are uh, posted there. Uh, I think they're all in PDF format. Uh, otherwise, does anyone have any questions about our rules and how we conduct our meeting? Okay, hearing none. Right now, it looks like we do not actually need to seat any alternates because we have a full contingent of commissioners. But I don't know, even though we don't get to seat huge white and Doug, I don't, I don't, I think you're still on the hook for our, the usual party you have to throw for us when you're seated. So we'll meet you at Sherwood's tomorrow night. Uh, I just have a quick few announcements as chair and I'll be real quick. My usual thank yous to all of you as commissioners and thank you to the staff for everything that gets done. Um, we do have a uh, planning meeting listed for February 4th. I believe that's the first Thursday. We wanted to get back to having our planning meetings and it's been a while since we had them. And probably one of the best things would be for us to uh, rediscuss what topics or items we wanna take up. I know we had left off with discussing agricultural issues and things like farm stores, but there were a few other things that we had also raised as well. So 
I know we actually have a strategic plan that we, from time to time we update and we can get that document out to everyone and we can kind of uh, reset ourselves for the new year as far as what we want to do from a planning point of view and what we want to pick up and what topics we want to tackle. So we, that could certainly be an agenda item uh, for our first Thursday. I've heard from a number of you already who have asked me, what will we be doing for a planning point of view? And in my sense, unless anybody else has anything different would be to regroup and re redirect ourselves for the new year. When I looked back, it looks like it's literally been almost a year um, since we've actually been able to have a planning meeting. Um, so that will be the first Thursday um, um, uh, of the month. And that's just around the corner. So we'll be getting agenda and stuff out to you all. Uh, just want to put another plug in for our annual legal training session. That's the first Thursday of April. I believe that is April 4th. If you do have any, um, is it April 4th? I believe it is, that's when we decided. Um, if you do have any um, uh, questions you wanna bring forward, let me know. And what I'll do is the usual, I'll put them all together in a list and we'll get them all out in one fell swoop to our town attorney. And we can go accordingly for that. Jeff, uh, can I just jump in with a quick question? I thought it was March 4th. We ended you're right. Up yes, March it is. I'm sorry. It's March 4th. You're correct. Because okay. I was thinking to myself that we needed stuff in by February. So uh, yes, you're correct. March 4th. I'm sorry about that. And um, so whatever questions you have, send to me and we'll collate them all into one running list. Uh, we'll certainly ask our town attorney to go through a little primer on the review he normally does of some of the basic planning and zoning stuff anyway, uh, and where we stand with stuff. And I don't know when the Connecticut Bar Association is going to open up registration for the land use seminar it does every couple of years. Um, but as soon as that is open, unless it's already open, any commissioner who wishes to uh, sign up can do so. Uh, we do have money in the budget to cover registration fee. And I believe it's Saturday, March 6. It's virtual this time uh, that they're doing it. So there is that opportunity. And I do want to extend condolences to Nancy Frazier and her family on the uh, passing away of her uh, father. She's not able to be here tonight uh, attending to uh, family issues. Um, that takes us to citizens' comments. Are there any comments from citizens not on any item that is otherwise listed on our agenda? I'm just scrolling through the screen here. Okay. Um, that takes us to our meeting minutes, which is that this is actually past year stuff now, December 17th of 2020. What is the uh, wish of the commission? I move, we approve Dickinson. Second, Morse. So motion made by Dickinson, seconded by Morse to approve the uh, meeting minutes as uh, presented. Uh, the motion is on the table. Is there... Any items that people have any comments, questions, suggested corrections? Hearing none, I'll go through the roll. Joe Adaletta? Aye. Mark Blackmer? Aye. Sid Blodgett? Aye. Gail Dickinson? Aye. Jeff Gordon? Aye. Jeff Marcotte? Aye. David Morse. I abstain, I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Uh, Doug, uh, no, I'm sorry, Doug, I can't ask you. Fred Rich. Aye. And Tim Young. Aye. That so passes. So we will uh, note that. Thank you. This takes us to agenda item seven. We're zipping right along. Preliminary discussion, we actually have none. So that now takes us to agenda item eight, which is the YMCA Camp Woodstock. Uh, if you remember, this is for the Montessori School location and dining hall. And we were waiting to find out about whether or not NDDH needed to provide us anything um, um, or not. We did hear from NDDH um, so, uh, and it should be in the meeting packet as far as that they did not have anything that they needed to sign off on uh, at this time. Uh, I know, Doug, you are, um, well, actually, you're not seated, but we'll note that you're recused anyway, even though alternates can still uh, participate in the meeting. 
Um, there's no other doc, new documents we have on this. I know uh, Tina, from your point of view, from a staff point of view, this was the only item we were trying to wait to get clarification on. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And it looks like we got clarification. So I, I'll open it up to commissioners if commissioners have any questions or comments or whatever the wish of the commission is. I, I would move Jeff to accept uh, the application as presented. And is there a second? I will second that, Tim Young. Okay, so motion by Adeletta, seconded by Young to approve the application as presented. The motion is on the table. Is there any discussion on the motion on the table? I don't see or hear any, so I will go through the roll. Joe Adeletta. I'll vote yes and wish Holly uh, good luck with this. Mark Blackmer. Yes, for me. Sid Blodgett. Yes. Gail Dickinson. Yes. Jeff Gordon. Yes. Jeff Marcotte. Yes. David Morse. Yes. Fred Rich. Yes. And Tim Young. Yes. That so passes. And Tina, I'll know you, you'll do your usual magic that you do behind the scenes now that we've approved this. Yes, I will. And Thanks. congratulations, Holly. I wish you all the best. Let's see, we are now at agenda item 9A. This is new business number SP9604M. GED Enterprise LLC doing business as Bradford Standing Seam, 130 Broadway Road. This is a modification to a special permit. Um, it does require that we schedule a public hearing. Thus, I'll caution people that we really can't get into much in the way of a discussion tonight on the application because we have to do that during a public hearing. But um, I don't know if there's anything from a staff perspective. Uh, Tina, you were the one that reviewed this? Or is it uh, Delia? Delia, you did. Delia reviewed. Delia did. I've been okay. out this week. And this, my, uh, my understanding is it's a complete application as far as our purposes tonight. And was yes. there anything from your perspective, Delia? Otherwise, certainly we can hear from you during the public hearing. I think because they are only proposing to basically move in and operate a business without making any changes. I think what they've submitted is, is fine. Okay. Um, re so really at this point then what we need to do is schedule a public hearing and then we'll have a full opportunity to hear from the applicant, hear from staff and hear from all of us and any members of the public who wish to uh, uh, to weigh in. So um, what is the wish of the commission? Move we schedule a public hearing for our next regular meeting in February. And that would be February, 18th. I believe, February 18th? Yes. Yes. And we've been usually scheduling the public hearings to start at 745, if that's okay with you, Gail. That's fine. Okay. And is there a second? Second, Blackmore. Okay. So motion by Dickinson, seconded by Blackmore to schedule a public hearing for February 18th at 7.45 p.m. Is there any um, discussion of the motion on the table? Seeing and hearing none, I'll go through the roll. Joe Adeletta. Hi. Mark Blackmer. Aye. Sid Blodgett. Aye. Gail Dickinson. Aye. Jeff Gordon. Aye. Jeff Marcotte. Aye. David Morse. Aye. Fred Rich. Aye. And Timothy Young. Aye. That so passes. So I, I know Tina and and Dale, you'll take care of whatever needs to be done as you usually do with regards to the to stuff. Yes. Okay, so we will take this back up 
uh, at our next uh, regular business meeting. Uh, the next item we have is a old business. This is agenda item 10A, number 6451029. This is the Center Road LLC three lot subdivision. We had um, uh, tabled this to this meeting at the request of the applicant. Um, so us to take up business, can I have a motion to untable it? So moved, Tim Young. Is there a second? Second. Second, Dick. I didn't, was that you, Joe? Or Dave, either oh, one. Either one of us. So I'll, I'll mark down uh, Dave, that David then. So motion by Young, seconded by Morse to untable the agenda item. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll go through the roll. Joe Adaletta. Aye. Mark Lackmer. Aye. Sid Blodgett. Aye. Neil Dickinson. Aye. Jeff Gordon. Aye. Jeff Marcotte. Aye. David Morse. Aye. Fred Rich. Aye. And Timothy Young. Aye. Fantastic. Now, there was um, some last minute, a last minute document that we sent out about this. Um, the uh, applicant, the applicant's representative has asked for another extension um, to take this through to the, our next business meeting. Technically, based upon state statute, we have, we can actually go 33 more days to extend this, which would take us through February 23rd. So that would definitely cover us through our next meeting. That's the maximum we can do per what state statute allows. Because we've already granted one extension and that one covered us for 32 days. So now we can do another 33 to take us up to the 65. Um, uh, so really at this point, then the business of the commission is to accept the um, request. And my recommendation would be to, to make it for that full 33 days to, to cover us to the maximum time. And then we're good. I have a question, Jeff. Suppose yep. there's a storm or we lose power. We and we can't have a meeting. And so, and all of a sudden we're out of time. What does that, is there any, I mean, so what happens if we run out of extension time? I have thought about that. I've also thought about earlier this week, what happens if we never got a, uh, an extension request so, such there was a flurry of activity behind the scenes to find out what the applicant wanted to do. So if we reach a statutory limit then, and we fail to act, it's a default approval. Otherwise, we could decide how to vote upon it, but if something is incomplete or not compliant, we would then be likely to vote or deny the application. One of the things I'll have to ask the town attorney is uh, if there is something like that, what would we do? We would have to have to turn around and try to hold a special meeting before the, that time frame elapses, which would be the 23rd of February, which I don't know what day of the week that is. Um, or are we granted any additional time by the governor's executive orders provided the governor's executive orders are renewed? Because I think they expire on, I don't know if they expire on February 9th or how long some of those orders go on for. Um, so that's one of the things we'd ha I'll have to ask uh, Rich how, how that would be handled. But normally, we would then have to try to pivot and see what to do within that statutory time frame. Does it make any difference that the applicant is asking for the extensions and it's not our, it's not our problem that it's being extended? You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not us that's holding it up. It's the applicant. It seems like an applicant could kind of do this and almost... Um, you know, hope for a automatic default passing. Well, what would happen is if they try to hope for an automatic default, I think we would be wise enough to see that. And what would happen is they would be notified that if they reach that statutory time frame, and we either have don't have the full information needed to make the decision because we're still waiting for things or revisions, or it is not compliant because there has not been appropriate revisions then it can just be denied. 
Okay, I'm just thinking that if we don't have the, if something happens, we don't have the meeting, then we're on a special, you know, then we have to have a, you know, a emergency meeting. I was just, since the applicant is postponing it, I didn't know if there's any different rules applied. Uh, no, there really wouldn't be because the applicant has to request this type of extension, but I will be asking Rich what happens relative to any executive orders if they would otherwise apply. Doug? Okay. Yeah, uh, Jeff, I would ask the town attorney, uh, my understanding always has been that if, uh, if I, and guess what, I've been in front of you as an applicant, if I added, asked for an extension, that was separate from your time frame. So your time frame didn't kick in until my exception, my extension expired because I think it's there just to prevent this from happening where the applicant continues to ask for accept, uh, accent, extensions and it reduces your time. I think your time is after his uh, extensions expire. I don't know, do you, do you remember? I remember I looked at, this is not a public hearing. So I believe um, the time frame that normally applies to when we close a public hearing and then we have to make a decision, there's no public hearing on this, yep. so. Right. Each each section of the process has so many days and then you have a like a pool of days available for extensions and i don't think it matters who's asking for them i think once you get you use up the days you have those extension days available and once you've used them up then you're out of time and that's my understanding here when i was calculating i, have, I think you should uh, defer to council i disagree with you um but that's why we have council. Yeah, we certainly could. Adelia has her entire time frame that she spelled out based upon state statute. I'll certainly talk with Rich. I have no problem with that. Uh, well, it's just I, I see it as an opportunity for applicants uh, to take advantage of the situation. Just what Dave is saying. Uh, they eat up all the extensions so that we're forced to act within two or three days or the process is automatically approved. And I don't think that's the way the ext extensions work. When I look at the subdivision application timeline here, we have, we've already taken it up. So we met that criteria for when we received it. But my understanding is that there is, once we've received it, uh, let's see here. Well, there's no public hearing. So the way I've been reading this following the time timeline is they're allowed 33 more days and then that uses up their full 65 days of allowed extension time beyond what we normally have. But I'll ask Rich and verify because I have to ask him anyway, you know, if there's anything otherwise relative to the governor's executive orders where additional time is allowed. But I, I, I don't know if that's, a, if that's relative to a non-public hearing. So I was going to ask him anyway. So I'll ask him that additional question, Doug. Thank you very much. Yep. So... But otherwise, right now we have the request for the um, extension, and we have we have 33 more days to <clears throat> apply to that additional extension, based upon the total 65 that they can ask. So right now that would be our action item, if that's what the commission wishes to do. Mr. Chairman, could we schedule it on our planning day? instead, which would give us a cushion of time in case there is a storm? We could, I don't know if they're gonna be ready. We pushed them a lot behind the scenes to get something out this week to find out what they were ready or not ready to do. Um, we could try to do that, but if they come back with revisions, we have to have enough time for design professionals to review it. So if you wish to, to do that, we could. Uh, I know we had wanted to try to keep that planning, our planning meetings open for planning, but it's really what the commission wishes to do. Uh, uh, Would we have time after um, you talk to council to be able to schedule it and get it on the agenda after you talk to council and see if we need to do that or if it's okay to wait? Until the agenda the hasn't even been finalized yet and, or submitted. We have more than enough time to submit an agenda uh, to town hall, so I'm not worried about that. It's more we have to schedule. We have to say when you know, if we would like to put on the agenda. So we can grant the full remaining 33 days. And if we would like to see about trying to put this on for the February 4th meeting, we could do that provided the applicant feels they have stuff ready uh, and that there's enough time if they submit revisions for design professionals and staff to review it. So I don't have a problem if that's what the commission wishes to do. If I could make a suggestion, Jeff, uh, yep. that if, 
you are able to contact the attorney and determine which way uh, the timeline goes, whether it's all inclusive or if the applicant's request is exclusive of P and Z's time limit, that can help determine whether we should consider putting it on the February agenda. And on the February agenda, if, if the attorney's comment is that all time extensions are part and parcel of the 65 days, regardless of who asked for them, then I would suggest at the February 5th that we look at the application that we have to date and either accept or deny it. And since it's not compliant, I would expect we would be in a position to deny it at the 5th. Um, okay. Unless the applicant is ready to come in with the compliance. My understanding is they're sorting through what they want to do. Yeah. And they might potentially withdraw depending upon what happens with what they want to do with the parcel. Otherwise, there are revisions they, they, they know they have to make and we have to have that reviewed. So what we can do is first course of action is for us to accept and vote upon the extension request. Uh, and what we can do with that is if we accept the extension request, we can accept, we can accept it for the full remaining 33 days. And then we can um, table this item to, if we want, to the February 4th meeting. That, then I would make a rec uh, motion, Jeff, to uh, accept the extension for the 33 days. And did you also want to put in or have that as a separate motion to table this then to the February 4th meeting. I think tabling it as a secondary motion is a good idea. All right. So right now that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Morse. So motion by Adeletta, seconded by Morse to accept uh, the, uh, the remaining 33 day extension request by the um, applicant. Is there any discussion? Yes, Jeff, if we are, extend it the 33 days, then can we do it in only a couple of weeks? Can we do it on the fourth? Yes, the, we can do it before. The extension covers you up through to the full time, but you can do it before that the, the, the number of days expires. So, and separately, as I said, I'll ask the question that Doug asked of uh, Rich Roberts about uh, the timeline. Any, any other discussion on this motion to accept the extension? I don't see anyone or here, so I'll go through the roll. Joe Adeletta. Aye. Mark Blackmer. Aye. Sid Blodgett. Aye. Gail Dickinson. Aye. Jeff Gordon. Aye. Jeff Marcotte. Aye. Uh, David Morse. Aye. Oh, let me just get my page here again. Fred Rich. Aye. And Dwight, I mean, uh, Tim Young. Aye. That so passes. So I'll put, we'll have this on the agenda and we will, um, I'll report back what um, the what town attorney says. And we'll go from there. That then would take us to, um, technically we have to table this. So that will be, we need a motion to table this to our February 4th meeting if that's what we wish to do. I move we table it to our February 4th meeting. Okay. And is there a second? Second, Blackmer. So motion by Dickinson, seconded by Blackmer to table this agenda item to February 4th meeting. Is there any discussion on the motion on the table? Okay, I'll go through the row, Joe Adeletta. Aye. Mark Blackmer. Aye. Sid Blodgett. Aye. Uh, Gail Dickinson. Aye. Jeff Gordon. Aye. Jeff Marcotte. Aye. David Morse. Aye. Fred Rich. Aye. And Timothy Young. Aye. I take that passes. All right. Uh, that takes us to the most exciting part of our meeting, which is hearing from our zoning enforcement officer. Anything you have, um, Tina, relative to the office permits enforcement? Hi, I've been out all week ill, so sorry. I've refused to put the video on. Um, 
uh, I submitted the report to you. And so if you have any questions on anything, obviously I've been trying to work from home as much as possible this week. Um, I am working on some enforcement issues. I tried to give you some of those details. Does anyone have any questions? I've got a question. Sure. If you if you have that uh, list in front of you, uh, Tina, it, it's just the name of an, a permit request for December 29th, SS28 construction. Is, is that the name or was there? That's the name of the construction company. And I don't have the list in front of me. Unfortunately, I don't have my packet. OK, um, that's all I needed. To, uh, but I, it definitely is the construction company's name. Thank you. That's Sig Swanberg. He's up done. But yeah, oh, was, no, that's not Swan. I'm sorry. No, I, no, it wasn't. That would be what SNS construction. Is that how he goes that's, by? That's, or something? That's SNS. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anyone have anything else relative to the reports that uh, Tina has for uh, ZEO? And I guess, am I correct, Tina, that when you're ill out of office, the commission can appoint a temporary person and we can vote uh, Sid Blodgett in to run around town as the acting zoning enforcement office officer in the town zoning enforcement car with the flashing lights and fancy <laughs> uniform. That would be awesome. <laughs> hey, I, I think it comes wanted... with a sidearm, uh, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> well, if nobody has anything else relative to that, thank you, Tina, for the report. I, I just wanted to uh, comment to thank Tina for following up on Treehouse uh, comments for the permits. Appreciate uh, seeing that information. You're welcome. Though I did see on television news tonight that Treehouse Breweries applied for liquor permit for their facility in Woodstock. They already got it. Yeah, we they already got it. Um, and in typical state fashion, we heard about it kind of near the end of their process. <laughs> so they did get it. So I think they're actually, they, they bought a big farm or property out in Western Massachusetts. I saw the news as well um, for that. I'm assuming they need a liquor permit just to do the fermentation and processing. It's not necessarily only to serve liquor, but to actually produce it. I'm assuming that. Yeah, I don't know. The state issues it and the state yeah. went ahead and, and granted it last month, I think. Right. If I remember correctly. So... So they got it. Um, is there anything else on the ZEO reports? Okay. Uh, is there anything on citizens comments not pertaining to any specific agenda item? Okay. We have our budget review and bills. I don't see there's any bills that we have to vote upon. I paid a, I think like an $8 bill. I didn't pay, I signed off of it for, I think it was a public hearing fee. Um, otherwise we have our, our budget and our, um, uh, how we're going this fiscal year. We've, we have submitted our next fiscal year budget request to the Board of Finance. Since it's a very tiny amount, I'm assuming they'll be okay with it. But as usual, I'll follow up with the Board of Finance about that. Um, does anyone have any questions about the, um, the budget review? Okay. We have no correspondence. Nobody wants to write to us or send us stuff. So that actually then takes us to um, the last agenda item, which is the one that uh, Commissioner Rich may want to say something about. Maybe he doesn't. Oh, we adjourn. I was getting Second. worried there. There was going to be no motion. Is Second. that you? Wish to join him? Is that you, Tim? Yeah. So motion by Rich, seconded by Young to adjourn. I'll go through the roll. We'll Aye. see. Anybody Aye. brave enough? Aye. Joe Adeletta? Aye. Mark Lackmer? Aye. Sid Blodgett? Aye. Gail Dickinson? Aye. Jeff Gordon? I'll vote aye. Jeff Marcotte? Aye. David Morse? Aye. Fred Rich? Aye. Timothy Young? Aye. That so passes, and I got 8.06 p.m. Good night, Dick. Good night, everybody, and stay safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.